Hello and welcome back to the Canadian History Channel on YouTube. I'm talking to you today about the start of the Second World War and of course as always I'm designing this video with the Ontario history curriculum in mind particularly the grade 10 history course Canadian history since 1914 for grade 10 and in this video we're going to be talking about the main causes of World War II and analyzing Canada's contribution to the war effort. The Second World War started in 1939. So this is basically a concept map of the start of the Second World War from 1939 and the again we're going to be addressing the underlying causes of the Second World War and Canada's contributions to the start of the Second World War. So one of the main causes are failed structures of peace. There's three of them that I'm going to be discussing. One is the Treaty of Versailles. The second is the failure of the League of Nations. And the third one is the failure of the Munich Pact. So we'll start with the Treaty of Versailles. The Treaty of Versailles is an agreement amongst allied leaders at the end of World War I that would assign responsibility, blame, and put together the terms and conditions under which everyone would walk away from World War I uh, and keep the peace. Canada, however, sat at the Paris Peace Conference when the Treaty of Versailles was being written up and criticized the Treaty of Versailles for being too harsh on Germany, which took all the blame for World War I. And the response to this criticism by the other Allied leaders was that this, the harsh conditions of the Treaty of Versailles were needed to control Germany. But at the start of World War II, it became evident that Germany had become bitter and angry over the terms and conditions of the Treaty of Versailles, which, like Canada criticized, was too harsh. The second failed structure of peace that contributed to the cause of the start of the Second World War in 1939 is the failure of the League of Nations. And the, and the League of Nations was an international organization to mediate between countries to keep and maintain peace in the world after World War I. And they failed to do that by not having consequences for countries that refused to come to the mediation table and work out their differences in other ways aside from war. In 1931, the invasion of Manchuria by Japan happened. The invasion of Abyssinia by Italy in 1935. And at this point, we're going to skip over to the other side of our concept map because in, by 1935, an alliance system started to emerge. And if you'll remember from our underlying causes of World War I, the alliance system which emerged prior to World War I was a contributing factor in the start of World War I. So alliance systems emerged after the invasion of Abyssinia by Italy in 1935, and this occurred during the Spanish Civil War in 1936. The Spanish Civil War uh, was a, war, a civil war in Spain that occurred after an election took place. The people of Spain elected in a socialist government that was democratically elected. Uh, the, the losing party was a fascist party headed off by Franco, who was a, a military leader, a dictator, and um, Franco, not taking uh, kindly to this loss in the election, wanted to overthrow the socialist government. And in 1936, the Spanish Civil War broke out. But in effect, it is an underlying cause of World War II in 1936 because this civil war functioned to bring together the axes of power, which is an alliance system between the fascist dictators all around the world at the time and Franco, who was a dictator trying to overflow, overthrow the socialist government in Spain, 
required the help of Hitler, which agreed, but he also got help from Japan, Italy, and of course Germany, and Spain. So they, they make up the axes of power at the start of World War II, and the Spanish Civil War is a, is a main contributing factor to the start of World War II because it brought these powers together. And of course, the Allies rallied together as well to help the socialist government defend themselves. And the Allies included the United States, Britain, Canada, and Canada, just a, a little side note here, the group that went to fight in the Spanish Civil War from Canada was called the Mackenzie Papineau Battalion, and they organized themselves as citizens and went over to fight in the Spanish Civil War illegally. It was actually against the law in Canada in 1936 to go and fight overseas in war. It was um, smack dab in the middle of the Great Depression, and although things were starting to look up, the country was still very concerned about conserving its resources and taking care of its own during the Great Depression. And so uh, it had a policy of isolationism in which uh, there was no going overseas to fight in overseas battles. But the Mackenzie Papineau Battalion arranged themselves and went overseas to help in the Spanish Civil War. And that is one of the contributions that Canada makes at the start of World War II. And of course they lose to Franco, the dictator that does eventually overthrow the socialist government with the help of Germany, Italy, and Japan, and mostly Germany. And Canada, the, the Canadian soldiers return to Canada, you know, with a message that, you know, we do have to break our policy of isolationism and get involved in what is going on around the world to prevent World War II. France is also a part of the Allies and Russia and the alliance system after 1936 is basically in place at that time. Germany invades Austria in 1938 and with the message that the Mackenzie Papineau Battalion brings back to Canada after the Spanish Civil War, the Canadian Prime Minister goes to other leaders and tries to put together um, a, a, an agreement to appease Hitler and prevent World War II in one last attempt. And this is done with the Munich Pact. Munich Pact um, is basically an, an agreement, if you will, to get Hitler to uh, take some land and not invade Poland as planned, but he leaves the Munich Pact and invades Poland anyway. And the trigger event for World War II is the all-out invasion of Poland by Germany in 1939. I want you to consider three questions about the start of the Second World War. One, what are the underlying causes of the Second World War? Underlying. Two, what is the immediate cause of the Second World War? And three, consider how the First World War began and identify what has changed and what has stayed the same with this Second World War, the start of the Second World War. Thank you for listening. This is the Canadian History Channel. Goodbye.